the local government is the closest um, government to the people. Uh, the local government is meant to be in charge of um, basic education as primary school. They are also in charge of uh, primary health. Um, they are also in charge of the environment, your street, your drainage, uh, and everything that really affects your day-to-day -day well being. And uh, we found out that the quality of governance at that level is borderline non-existent. You know, um, when you ask people who their council or local government chairman is, they struggle to remember. And we felt that um, we need to start populating governors at that level with competent people that can add value. That's the reason why we felt um, we should um, try out at the local government uh, level. Um, one of the reasons why we decided to try Lekki in particular is because of the uh, demography of people, the socioeconomic class of the people living in Lekki. We felt that um, they would understand our brand of politics better. Uh, they are largely middle to upper, uh, middle class, upper class, and they understand the politics of policies as against if we go to um, a more um, a, a, a local government where the majority are working class. Uh, they usually believe in uh, the politics of um, stomach infrastructure, as we call it. Uh, they are too, uh, things are too difficult for them to start thinking about a year's time, two years' time, three years' time. It's all about quick um, reward. You know, they can't do the further uh, gratification. That's why we targeted Lekki, and that's why we felt the local government needs to be addressed. The thinking is also if you have good primary education, if you have good primary health care, if your streets are clean, you stand a chance uh in the world to make progress in life after we decided to run you know campaign was was fully active we went into the all the different communities around the, in our constituency we bonded with the communities we presented our vision um our campaign was 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 had two priorities environment and job creation which um i believe are tied together because it's almost as though the constituency was it was completely ungoverned when you look at the state of our, of our environment and the tons of young people who just you know mill about with no with nobody engaging them so we went in with a very clear vision to um, clean up the environment and also engage the young people by giving them jobs and that was very welcome you know by the community you know they received us well and uh, we got a lot of buying from young people. But at the background, you know, a lot was happening. Um, the Youth Party is a legally registered um, party with the Independent National Electoral Commission. But somehow, um, we were not being allowed to participate in all the pre-election processes. You know, our names did not come out on the forms, our names did not, um, you know, we, we, we just were not sure whether we were actually going to you know, be on the ballot paper at the end of the day. So it was more like we were campaigning by faith in, in, a, not in a sense, because, you know, we were doing all this work, we were getting a lot of people to support us, we were, we were, we were in, in a sense, recruiting a lot of people, but we did not know whether at the end of the day, you know, when they go out to vote, they will actually see the youth party on the ballot paper. The exclusion really affected us. Uh, in a simplistic, in simplistic term, there was no level playing field. Uh, our ability to raise uh, campaign funds was largely uh, impaired because you can imagine I'm coming to you to ask you to donate to the campaign. Now you are, you are being told that uh, we're not a registered party. You are not going to give us time. And if you give us time, you probably won't give us money. Also, we're being demarketed among the electorate. You know, you are talking to people, people want to support a potential winner. You know, why should we support you? Why should we campaign for you uh, when you might not even be on the ballot paper? And what is quite obvious to us and everybody is that you have a biased umpire. You know, you have people that have an interest. They are more or less referees that are wearing the jerseys of the other team and they have no apologies about it. They do it openly. 
Uh, so before the election, while everyone was focusing on campaign, was focusing on other things, our uh, resources and attention were divided between the court and campaign, and also even persuading our party members that you know that everything is under control that they should come on. So we were not given a level playing field. Uh, and uh, when you talk about um, uh, a free and fair election, it's not just on the election day. It's also about what happened uh, before the election day. And there were some other people that were, uh, some other things that were done to really uh, create an imbalance. So I had contested in 2019. So um, as a result, I was privy to the kind of things that can happen on election day and before election day. So I offered my services to um, Tari as a result to say, look, Tari, let me come with you. Let me be part of your team. Let me explain to the agents that we're going to get how it is important that they do certain things and kind of things that you should look out for. No book tells you about election day. There's nothing that tells you what happens on election day. You read different things about oh, how to go about the election. When the, you know, the part that you always hear is that, oh, people stay there and they, they, they uh, protect their votes, but they don't protect the vote because at a certain point in time, INEC closes the books, everybody puts the things inside the box and then they go away. So from that point, that transit point, a lot more can happen as I would let you know as we go along. So on the day of the election, people had come, quite a number of people had come out because I even saw an auntie of mine that come, but the, the LISEC people went there, they, they didn't come on time. They only strode in at about maybe nine something, they strode into the, to the place. The girl came with two booklets and the box where you put the, the um, ballot boxes, where you put the things inside, and then that was it. And then we were first with the first deliver, where is she gonna sit? There were no seats, no seats, no table. I had to take out money, call one of the boys around there. We had to take an Okada to go and rent seats and chairs, um, the chairs and the table for her to be able to sit. That was the first point. So at that point, after that was done, the people that were hanging around, they obviously the agent for APC was there, the agent for the other parties were there, PDP. There were just three of us at the polling unit. Anyway, it was just PDP, APC, and youth party. So just the three. So the other two agents were there waiting. They didn't even bite an eyelid. They didn't even say, oh, why are you late? Why did you not come? Why have you just come? I was the only one that walked up to her. Okay, so we set you up now. Please, can you bring out the ballot papers and your registered, your list, your, your, your registered voters list? Because it's important to balance the registered voters list with the ballot paper. When she brought out the registered um, voters list, I think we had like about um, 7,000 something or registered voters on the list. And she only came with two booklets of ballot papers, um, one for the chairmanship and then the other one for the councillorship. And I said to her, uh, why? We're already, already starting at the uh, on a low, low low place because right now you have a set you have a you have thousands registered voters and you've only come with 200 are you preempting are you saying that only 200 people are going to come out this was when i first knew that there was a problem yes we do know that there's voter apathy we know that there's a low turnout of, of um voters on the day of election for them for 200 to 1000 is nothing compared to it while dealing with that one i had to go away too, because i was like i said i was supervising all the other ones um, I left someone in charge, went away, got to a polling unit, found out that if you're the polling unit, there were no, there were no agents there, no polling boxes, nothing there. We started trying to trace where those ones were, we found out that they had gone to one place, or one was in Victoria Island instead of being in um, Lekki, which is Etiosa. Um, that was another problem, another hurdle we had to, we had to deal with. Then I got to a polling unit, um, I think, um, and I got there and then I, I just suddenly noticed that the polling, the, the ballot paper was saying it will be I. And will, this is us in Lekki. And at that point I said, no, what is not gonna occur here? I mean, what's happening here? Oh, she said, oh, that oh, she's not very conversant with the area and she just came from a different area. So that's what they gave to her. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Call your presiding officer, call anybody that you need to call. But you cannot be voting for your VI in Lekki where we are voting, so are voting for a different candidate in, completely i mean that's not going to work and that's not on we started with that process i asked everybody to please not go to stop until they get someone to come and deal with the issue we waited a while uh, some of the polling units the agents were asked to leave they were not given access um i know that in, in um 
in um, in some of the ones like the ones the palace for instance the agents were not allowed to go in there they were intimidated they were told that they would be beaten up and of course they, they i mean they, they they had to run for their lives so i mean like so like you think about it like in five of the units nothing happened because of intimidation so we were intimidated we were all that and all that happened See, the purpose of elections are to consult with the people and to validate and legitimize governments. The idea is that if the people express their opinion in a way that can be measured, then it gives authority to the governments to carry out acts in their name. If an election lacks legitimacy for any of those reasons, um, that is, it has not been a proper consultation and you do not know what is the will of the people, then the legitimacy of the government is, by definition, affected. Low turnout of election is considered in many electoral systems to be a dangerous problem, both for the progress of the democracy, the stability of society, and for the validity of the election itself. This is why in many countries, elections are, voting is either compulsory or an election is not regarded as valid unless very various percentages, 60%, 50% have actually voted in that election. If 10% or 20% as we're seeing in some of our elections in Nigeria is the, is the mandate that, election, that is given to the government, then by any international standard, that election is one lacking legitimacy. It cannot be used as a basis for claiming a mandate for the many sweeping things the government has to do. So there's a political cost, obviously, of a persistently low mandate. And there's a legal cost in that in many rational legal systems, this sort of election is considered by definition illegitimate. And what happens, of course, is that there's a persistently low turnout in election. Ultimately, people will stop voting and it'll be recognized that a government that has no, you know, a, a, a point that people don't really get is that you cannot govern any territory by force alone. You cannot govern any territory by pretending to, to have authority. That authority is given by the people, whether it's by a measurable way or an immeasurable way. You cannot govern without consent. So if you line up all the soldiers in Nigeria, they cannot cover Lagos State. How do you maintain order? By people accepting across the board that you have the right to govern. And that right in the democratic system comes from the exercise of political choice in the election. Now, for those of us who are just in the political process, and for those of us who have participated as Atari and the Youth Party, you need to continue to interrogate the mechanism by which that consultation is operated. And all the things that Mr. Locker has indicated, tell me as an individual that the Nigerian political elite, those who operate the system of elections, do not believe in the mechanism of democracy. They do not believe that the people should be consulted or that their opinion is valid and that there is a consistent and systematic calculation to subvert the will of the people while keeping the pretense of democracy. They need to keep the pretense because they can claim that they legitimately elect a government, but they do not want to test their popularity or test the satisfaction of the people or to test the accountability which they owe the people in the electoral process. So all those manipulations, all those efforts to dislocate the choice of the people suppressing party representation, um, moving electoral ballots, canceling votes in specific areas, thuggery, violence, treating. These are all classified across the world as malpractices. And that, that these are elements which undermine the validity of an election. What we were demanding for was a rerun because the election never took place. There were 16 polling units. Eight out of the polling units there were overvoting um, incidences. What do I mean by that? You have clear cases based on documents where 30 people are accredited to vote. Then the total number of votes were 300, 400. And according to the extant electoral laws, that means election did not take place. It's a nullity. That was the reason why we went to the electoral, uh, the election tribunal. The other reason was that people came out in the morning and they made sure 
they were frustrated to go back. And it has not always been like this. 1999, the voters turnout was almost 50%. 2003, it was about 60 something percent. But as the system became brazenly unfair, people started losing interest. Even when they come out, they get frustrated. They bring their own ballot paper. You know, they have different ways. So um, out of 16 polling units, eight of them over voting, there were other things. So we're asking for cancellation. We're asking for rerun. Polling unit 13 and 14 in particular. Polling unit 13, election started at three, uh, about three o'clock or 3.15 for an election that was meant to start at eight o'clock in the morning. Who is going to wait from eight in the morning to three o'clock to vote? So by so doing, you cannot say election in that place was done in substantial compliance with the law. In the result sheet, there was no result for polling unit 13. And the number of registered voters in polling unit 13 was more than um, uh, the margin of victory between the winner and our candidate. So there was meant to be a rerun, but they didn't listen to us. And the reason why there will continue to be voters apathy is that you have an umpire that is openly biased. We went to the election, the electoral tribunal, and part of the orders that was put in our way, for them to even set up the electoral tribunal, we had to threaten them. We had to write letters. We had to go to the press. You need to file your election and uh, your notice of uh, petition within 20 days. Where are you going to file it if the electoral tribunal, election tribunal is not constituted? We had to force them to constitute it. We had to force them to do everything. We had to pay I, uh, last year to give us electoral materials. We paid through the news. We paid officially over 300K, 500K to have those papers. We have to pay them to come. They made it very, very expensive. And they were not hiding it. Even in court, you, you see La Siege Council now holding the brief of APC. They were not even beating around the bush. The system that we were up against um, was, was intimidating, to say the least. You know, but we had to do it. We needed to interrogate the system. We needed to let the system know that we are going to ask questions. You can have your way, but we are going to have our say. What happened in that election? We're going to put it in the judicial system. We're going to put it in the public domain. And I think we've done that successfully. Information regarding elections needs to be democratized. It's not fair and it's not, it doesn't make any sense that as a candidate running for an election, there is no transparent and legal process of me knowing the boundaries of my constituency. And that was, that was our experience. We were running for office and we had no idea what our ward boundaries were. We had no idea what our polling units would be. And this is not because uh, we were not making an effort to find out. But why should we even be making that much of an effort? This should, this should be information that should be public record. Information cannot be cannot be weaponized against you know um, players players in an electoral process where it only it seems that if the electoral umpire only shares with a select group of people and the rest of us are, are left to be in the gap. And that, that is that is very, very biased and it's unacceptable. So it's, that, that, is some, that is an electoral reform that urgently needs to be carried out. And the first thing is the mode of appointment of INEC commissioners and last year commissioners. I think it must reflect um, fairness. Whilst uh, the president or the governor won the mandate, quote and unquote, of the people, if the commissioners are 11, he should be allowed to choose uh, maybe five, maybe four, and the rest should go to certain respected institutions 
be Nigerian Judicial Commission, be Nigerian Society of Engineers, be, be Nigerian Bar Association, and um, bodies like that. And I think that's the only way um, you can have some level of fairness as long as a partisan body is choosing all the INF commissioners or last year commissioners, uh, the process is going to be brazenly rigged uh, against um, everyone. I think uh, for me, that, that's the first one. I think the second one is the amendment of section 225A of the constitution. I think it is accepted all over the world that multi-party democracy is the way forward. Now, that particular section is saying when you are registered as a party, within a month, two months, the very first election, if you don't win something, you are going to be deregistered. So you are asking a child that was born yesterday to take an exam with a university graduate and he must pass. So our thinking is, a newly registered party must be given four to eight years to grow organically. You must make every process as, that you can easy to attain. Right now it's made difficult. It's made to discourage voting. It's made to be sure that only those who are diehards or who are steeped in the corruption of the system and are benefiting by that means are the ones who are persistent in voting. And so the, 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 this is how I think that the future of democracy, to answer your question in summary, requires the widest participation of the widest number of people by the easiest possible means so that they have confidence in the legitimacy and accountability of their governance.